Today, I'm going to show you some of the basics of using Niagara in Unreal Engine 5. And I'm going to do that by showing you some of the behind the scenes of this project I did with my friends over at Stoneblade Entertainment and their game Soulforge Fusion with some animated artwork. So let's go into Unreal and talk about how to do some particle stuff because it's fun. So we're starting off in Unreal Engine 5, and I have this base scene here, which is the 2.5D animation that I did for my client. Now, if we leave the camera and we look around our scene, we can see that we have this little landscape here to create some depth to our scene. We have some 2D cards for the little city atmosphere. We have our tower. We have some dragons, and we want to add some particles to this. So what I did originally is I went into a Niagara system. We'll go over this in just a second. And I made a swirl effect, which we can easily just drop in here and adjust properties and scale it up to fit within our scene and very easily drop it into our null where we have the center of our little animation here, zero out that position and basically create the same effect from the artwork. Now, to give you a point of reference, this is the artwork that we got from the client, and our goal was to make something a little bit more dynamic than this. Sure, you could do this in After Effects, but what I found over the last couple of years is that After Effects is a little slower when it comes to doing 2.5D animation, stuff like this, so I've moved over to using Unreal for this. So, with that in mind, I'm going to use Particles and Niagara to create this swirl effect, and it's actually pretty easy. So... What we're going to do is we're going to right click in our content browser. I recommend having a Niagara folder, but wherever you want to save your stuff is fine. And we're going to go up to effects and Niagara system. And you can either use some existing systems or templates. You can copy an existing system. You can create an empty system, or you can create a new system from selected admitters. We can find some engine provided emitters, basically where are we gonna emit particles from? We're gonna keep this super simple and actually go with an empty blank emitter so you can know what's up. We're gonna hit the plus sign right here and then hit finish. And it's gonna create a new Niagara object in our scene. What we're gonna do is we're gonna call this swirl underscore tutorial. We're gonna double click on that and it's gonna open up a new window. That window should look like this and nothing's happening. The reason why is there's no particles happening to our scene. So what we need to do is first we need to create some update for our particles. So we're gonna go to the plus sign right here. But before we do that, let's just identify what we're looking at right here. We have our master properties of our Niagara system right here. This is the overall system for Niagara, and this is gonna be an emitter. You could even add emitters here by holding right click and then selecting the option and adding something here. And now we can see, if we start at the very beginning, right there, we get a little bit of particles right there. But we're gonna make something from scratch. So in this empty, we're gonna call this swirl. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the emitter update. Like I said, we're gonna hit the plus sign. We're going to go to the spawn type so fortunately, it gives us a suggested window right here. And for my needs as a motion graphics artist, this is pretty much everything I need. So we could either do an instantaneous burst, so like a gunshot or an explosion, or we can do a spawn rate where it'll spawn continuously. So with the spawn rate here, I'm going to set this to like, say, 500. And now we're getting a circle in here. That's actually 500 particles being emitted continuously, but nothing's happening. We need to say, where's the particle spawning from? Fortunately, there's a little plus sign right here. We can go in here and we can see the suggested options. We can add a shape location, and this will allow us to change the shape in which particles are emitted from. The default is a sphere, and I always like to set this to a torus just because for me, it's a little easier to see nothing's happening again. They're just kind of emitting from some point in this Taurus and just staying there doing nothing crazy or fancy. So from here, as an example, I'm gonna add a velocity. So we can go to add velocity. And now from here, it's gonna give us a little error. Very conveniently, the developers over at Unreal Engine know that motion designers like me, or me in particular, sometimes have a hard time understanding the technical stuff. So they have little ways to help fix issues. It's not always gonna be perfect, but 
for the most part, they'll have little error messages that you can fix if there is an issue. So it's not really doing much right now, but if we crank up this velocity and we hit the play button, hey, look, now we're getting some particles moving up. But I want to create that swirl effect that I was showing you earlier. So we're going to delete the add velocity, and they're not going to do anything. We have the particle update now. What kind of behavior is the particles going to do? So this is where we get to the fun part. We can hit the plus sign right here, and we can scroll down to the forces. And then very conveniently, there's all different types of forces to help move those particles. So I love using the vortex force, and on my Halo trailer that I did about a year ago, this is kind of what I did to create that big swirl in the scene, just a ton of particles in a vortex. Click that, and now we get some spinning particles. And it's playing back very, very fast relative to other software, which is something I really like. So now we can really update this. And on top of that, the properties in the Vortex Force can really allow us to be really creative with how we set up our system. So I'm gonna set the origin pull amount to be really, really high so that they actually stay somewhat close, closer. I'll bring down the Vortex amount so that they stay relatively within the same circular shape, but they are going to be spinning. Now, this will end up being a lot of push and pull when it comes to creating that effect, but fortunately, there's other forces that you can add to help control your particles. So we're going to go to the plus sign once again, and we're going to go down to forces and drag. And this will create some drag. And I don't fully understand physics, but I know it'll slow down after the velocity has initiated at some point. So I'll just crank up the drag just a little bit so then the particles stay within this circular shape. And then I can just push and pull this as I need. So I'm going to fuss with this for a second and get something that I like. A few moments later. So after just a little bit, I did adjust these settings. So my vortex force amount is about 400. The pull amount to the origin is about 100. And I set the drag to 1.84. These numbers will differ for you, but I just want to give you them just in case you're trying to replicate what I'm making. On top of that, I did also go into the shape location and I increased the radius and the handle scale to these numbers just in case you want to adjust that as well. So I have this cool looking swirl that is getting me to where I want to be. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to control these particles a little bit more. So if we hit the plus sign and we go to scale color right here, we can add this or we can go down to the color tab and add some of these other options. But I like using scale color. It just makes more sense to me in my technical brain. But you can do lots of things. We're gonna add the scale color here, and it's gonna give us a new property that we can change. And it's gonna allow us to change the scale on a value of zero to one for the red, the green, and the blue, RGB. If we set the first value to one, and then the other values to zero and zero, it's gonna make it more red. And I think you can deduce what's gonna happen if we were to adjust the other values. So we'll set this to one, one, one. It's gonna be fully white because it's all the color. I want this to be easier to work with. For most properties in Niagara, there's going to be this little drop-down menu to the right of a property. And it's going to allow you to change the way you interact with that property. So I'm going to type in color. And there's this dynamic input tab, and it says make vector from linear color RGB. If we select that, now, very conveniently, there is a color picker that we can use for our Niagara system. So this is exactly what I want. Let's say I want to have some nice bright blue particles. Click OK. Awesome. After we set the color for our particles, now I want to adjust the size. We can do this in a couple of places, but first we're going to go into the initialized particle. So in the initialized particle tab, we can see here that there's the sprite size mode. And right now it's currently set to unset, which is going to give us a default value. I like setting this to random uniform, and it's going to give us a minimum value and a maximum value. So we can say that the minimum value is going to be 10, and the maximum value is going to be 50. Now we're going to get a particle that's a random size between 10 and 50. Awesome. My issue with it, though, is that it's popping in and just spawning magically, and I want it to scale up. So 
We're going to go to the particle update tab now. We're going to hit the plus sign. And in the search bar, we're going to search scale. And we're going to look up scale sprite size. Now, for this, we're using a sprite, which is going to be a 2D image. But if you're using a mesh, like a sphere or a cube, then you could use the scale mesh size. But right now, let's use the scale sprite size. And when we add the scale sprite size, it's going to give us this curve on the right side of our window over here. And basically, what this is telling us is at the start of the particle's life, it's going to be a scale of 0. But at the end of its life, it's going to be its maximum scale. But we're already determining the scale sprite or the particle size based on our sprite attributes, this is affecting the size over life. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the middle mouse button on my mouse and add a point there. And then I'm going to drag this to the very top, just like that. So it's at a value of one just like that. We can actually adjust the key data. So the first value here is going to be our time. And the second value is going to be the value. So we're going to set the value to one. And let's say the key data, I'll set this to 0.2. So let's say it has a, a lifespan of 10 seconds. At the two second mark, 0.2, it will have its full size of life. Now I want this to last for most of it. I'll add another keyframe here and then drag this last keyframe down and set the f first value to zero. So at the f end of its life, be a scale of zero. So now it's going to scale up and scale down. And now we're getting something pretty cool. Now what I want to do is I want to make this a little bit more organic. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to my particle spawn, hit the plus sign, and I'm going to go to my forces. One of my favorite things that I love using with Niagara is the curl noise force. And it's basically going to give us a little bit of oscillation or noise to our particles so that it looks a little bit more organic, not just moving in a straight line. Now I realize I made a little bit of a boo-boo. I hit the plus sign for the particle spawn, but we actually want to put the curl noise force in the particle update. So go back, curl noise force, and then now we're going to get a little bit of organic movement to our particles. But the big thing here is that it's really small right now. Let's crank up that strength to let's say 600 and see what happens. Now it's going all over the place. I'm going to crank this down. Let's say like 170. Maybe not enough. 250. Sure, that looks good. I'm going to set the noise frequency to like 50. I'm going to set the noise frequency to like 200. Maybe I'll bring up the noise strength just a little bit. So now the particles are kind of moving everywhere all over the place. This is perfectly fine for this tutorial. For you, make sure you update it however you want. I want to move on to the final piece, and that is adjusting the type of particle. So we're going to go down to the sprite renderer right here. And this is basically saying, what are we rendering? What are these particles actually going to be? You can add even more stuff here. You can add a mesh. You can add a light. You can add some other stuff. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to keep it super simple and make this a material still. Now, what I do recommend for most people getting started with Niagara is actually use something from the Unreal Marketplace. And one of my favorite packs that I love to use on the Unreal Marketplace, I am not sponsored by them, is this Dust and Smoke Effects pack. It's a really high quality set of dust and smoke that allows me to get some really good looking effects into my scene. And for dusty, cloudy, swirly particles like we had in our reference art, this works for me. So. I'm going to add this to my project. You can click on the add to project and it'll add it to your content browser. So I'm going to minimize this for just a second. I'm going to go to my content and I'm going to go to my dust effects here and dust effects tools and then materials. And we can see here that we're going to have a bunch of different types of dusty effects right here. And we can click on this first one, the MI and inst right here. And it's going to look like this. It's just a little cloud. It's actually kind of hard to see because it is just a cloud. But if we make sure we turn on two-sided or turn off two-sided, you can see that we have our cloud. And very conveniently, we can go into our Niagara window that we were just in, go to the sprite render, and in this material slot right here, we're going to find that 
this object right here. 12 seconds later. Got to make some space for this. So let's just uh, squash this down, take this, drag it in right there. And then what we can see is now we're getting a more organic dusty effect on our preview over here. But my issue with it is it's much, much too small now because the material and the actual particle default are different scales. So let's just adjust these numbers. I'll set the max size to let's say 300 and the min size to let's say 50. And that's looking pretty, pretty cool if you ask me. It's not perfect and it's not as organic as what I did in my actual example for my client, but it gets the point across for this tutorial. So after all of that, I would hit save. And then what I can do is I can delete this swirl that I have in my original scene. And then we are going to go back to our content browser. We're going to go to our Niagara presets or our Niagara folder, click on the swirl tutorial, drop it into our scene. And then we're just going to zero it out exactly where it needs to be and just scooch it into place right there. And what's really convenient about this is if we hit the W key or the the R key for scale and we hold control and scale this up. We can just scale it up just a little bit to create our shape around our scene. We can rotate this as we need. And what's really cool is that we can actually adjust some of the properties directly in our details panel, but there's none of them there right now. The reason why is we need to actually set some of these properties to be adjustable. So we're going to go back into our swirl, Niagara particle system and maximize this window. I want to be able to adjust some of these properties in my details panel. So to do that, very conveniently, there's this user parameters window right here. Now, the easiest way to get stuff into the user parameters folder right here on the lower left hand corner is find a property that you want, click on the little drop down menu that's to the right of a property in the Niagara window, and we're going to type user and read from new user parameter and it's going to create a parameter right here. We're going to do that for a couple things that I like to change, but you can build a Niagara system however you want. I like being able to change the minimum size and the maximum size. So we'll just add the minimum size. We will do that again. Type in user, read from new user parameter. We will go into the scale color. We will set this value to user. Now we'll be able to change the color there. And so we have the spawn rate, we have the color, we have the size. Let's say we want the vertex amount, vortex amount, user. And that should be good enough for this tutorial. So we're going to hit save on that. Make sure that saves in the background, and then we're going to minimize that. And we can see here that we have our swirl in our scene. We'll set the zero and zero on the X and the Z axis. And we will push this where it belongs, zero it out, bring it where it belongs, hit F on the keyboard to center it up in our viewport, hit R, hold control, scale it up to the size we want, maybe do a little bit of rotation, and then we can adjust the min and max size. So let's say 150, 400. We have a lot of control over this even crank up that vortex amount by a lot. And now we get that cool looking swirl of our scene. So for this tutorial, this should get you started with how I set up the vortex stuff in my behind the scenes for the stone blade project. And I hope this answered a lot of questions on how to use Niagara. And if it did, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want more tutorials on Niagara or just Unreal in general, let me know down there as well. But in the meantime, I will leave you with the final tip. And that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And you'll make some Bye, my friends. Bye.